open mic. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tim Coco, and you're tuned correctly for the Open Mic Show. Uh, for some reason, maybe because we were late turning on our cameras, uh, Haverhill Community Television hasn't quite caught up yet, but hopefully they will soon. Again, this is the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. This first hour of Open Mic is being brought to you by Northern Essex Community College. Expect more at Northern Essex. All right, tonight, mostly open lines. Uh, I do want to continue our discussion of what is news that I started last week. Now, this may seem like a dry subject to some of you, but it is vital to democracy. Local news has been the, the largest victim of corporate media cutbacks and so nonprofit WHAV has come up with a solution and you'll find it at the brand new WHAV website at WHAV.net. We'll talk a little bit more about that but first let me tell you that you can watch the program at WHAV.net TV. If you previously bookmarked the site, you might want to just double check it with a new website in place and make sure all is operational. Uh, those of you who are, are unable to watch for the time being on Channel 22, you might try it out, whav.tv on your computer or smartphone. If you have the justin.tv app for your smartphone, you can also watch there. Meanwhile, and we hope it comes back soon, Haverhill Community Television Channel 22 normally carries the open mic program live. You can also listen to WHAV 24 hours a day, seven days a week, again on the web at whav.net. Now, a lot of people think it's .com. .net works, .org works. Unfortunately, we don't have control over uh, .com. Uh, in any event, you will find a brand new player on the WHAV website. If you're on your computer, the player starts automatically, so you don't have to hunt around for a play button or what have you. On your smartphone, you have to scroll down and find the um, the app and press the play button. It's pretty simple. Uh, works everywhere. So you might want to try that. Also on AM radio 1640 FM, with any luck, uh, coming soon, the FCC has received WHAV's application for a brand new FM radio station at 98.1 megahertz on your dial. We're still waiting word. Uh, the good news is the competition has been reduced. Up, WHAV is up against only one other applicant. We hope uh, that the FCC uh, makes the decision soon. Also, on cable television, you can listen to WHAV. Uh, usually, it's the music and sound you hear behind the bulletin boards. If you're watching on, on uh, Haverhill Community Television right now, uh, you'll see this is what normally happens. You see a bulletin board with other messaging on it, and then you can... Um, hear WHAV sound. I'm sure Nate's going to check in with them shortly and find out if there's any other any other problem there. Also you can listen on Andover Community Television Channel 8, Methuen Channels 8 and 22 on Comcast, Channel 32 on Verizon Fios, which incidentally is heard throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts on 32 in those communities with Fios. Plasto, channels 17 and 23, Sandown, channel 17. Now, I want to make sure that we thank the area community uh, television stations, public access television, public educational government that carry WHAV. Thanks go out to the boards, staff, management, and members 
of our local community access television stations. Next time you see someone representing one of those stations, let them know that you appreciate the service they provide. Now, for some reason, air conditioning was not up to uh, up to whatever par today, so I'm 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 in shirt sleeves instead of a, a suit coat. But you know, yesterday I went to the summer meeting of the Whittier Club, and I ran into a WHAV listener, Marcel, who told us last week she was going to go, and she did. And you know, I was not wearing a coat then, and she said I looked younger. So that might be a reason not to wear coats if that's the reason at all. So a Whittier uh, Club annual meeting, I think it was the 126th or 127th. I should have that, but I'm, my memory is uh, a little slow. Maybe some of you uh, were there as well. Let me know your thoughts. You can call the program from 6.30 to 8.30 Monday nights, 978-374. 1900. Certainly couldn't ask for a better day, and although the sun was uh, beaming, it seemed to be very comfortable in the uh, revamped carriage house on the Whittier grounds. Uh, Mark Roosh, a local artist and who's also caretaker at the Whittier birthplace, uh, gave a great presentation on painting and photography and uh, gave us a little insight into um, the mind of the artist. He uh, said at the outset that he was never all that interested in uh, painting landscapes, but living on the 70-acre property of the Whittier birthplace has inspired him to some extent, and beautiful work he has. Maybe some of you saw his display at um, Northern Essex Community College uh, a few months back. So, again, every week we do this. First caller who calls and requests it. No trivia question, no work. Only thing is, is if you've won any other prize from WHAV in the last 30 days, uh, I'm afraid you are not eligible to enter. But everyone else, free pass to the John Greenleaf Whittier birthplace. It's open Wednesday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., Saturday, 10 to 4, and Sunday, 1 to 4. Convenient time for someone, I'm sure. Of course, we are still conducting our June and July birthday and anniversary contest. If you or someone you know has a birthday or an anniversary in June or July, call WHAV, uh, provide your wish over the air, and if it's for yourself, you can wish yourself a happy birthday or a happy anniversary. Call WHAV, 978-374-1900. And I think next week is the week we draw the winner for June and July. And then beginning in July, we'll work one month ahead. So in July, we'll take August birthdays and anniversary and so on. And of course this would not be possible without help from our friends at LBD's Italian Bakery in Bradford. They're at 140 South Main Street and these people are absolutely amazing. Uh, they're open 6 a.m. every day of the week. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, 6 a.m. Uh, is something only when I have an important meeting and I have to get up. Otherwise, I uh, sleep in a little later than that. But if you're trying to catch the train or you want to bring a little treat to work, well, stop by LBD's Italian Bakery, 140 South Main Street. They're new, but they come from a, a second generation of the DeFusco family, and they've been working in the North Shore area for 50 years or so. Anyway, the winner will receive a 7-inch cake, either uh, uh, vanilla or chocolate. comes with uh, sugar frosting. And all you have to do if you win is wait for a letter from WHAV, which is your proof. Call in your, your cake 24 hours notice at least. They'll have it ready, then present your letter to prove that you won the cake. Copies are not allowed. Please bring your original WHAV letter. So birthdays and anniversaries, how about it? June or July, give me a call, 978-374-1900. Okay, still no, um, still no word 
from Haverhill Community Television. Maybe uh, we had to re reload our video software, and uh, it actually was incredibly fast from discovery of the problem to repair of the problem, but maybe they thought we weren't going to be ready since we didn't send out our test feed soon enough. So we'll, uh, we'll withhold any judgment there. Now tomorrow, the Republican Chamber of Commerce of Haverhill, oops, excuse me, the Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce uh, is featuring Scott Brown, gubernatorial uh, Senate candidate in New Hampshire of all places. Uh, he's always driving his truck across the border, suddenly realizes that New Hampshire was his home after all, and he's running for Senate again. Now, maybe some of you in New Hampshire support him, and I'm not trying to disparage him, but I do have a, a little bit of a problem historically with... Uh, uh, candidates who uh, will do anything to win, including change their place of residence, although uh, we've certainly seen it happen with people like Hillary Clinton as well, moving to New York and becoming a senator there, doesn't make it any better. I'm not chastising uh, Republicans only, I'm chastising both Democrats and Republicans. But Scott Brown, candidate for U.S. Senate, is going to be the featured speaker at the Republican Chamber of Commerce, uh, that is Haverhill Chamber of Commerce dinner tomorrow night in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Now, that's another strange thing. Again, this is an opinion program. This is, although you may hear some news on this program, it's an opinion program. And my opinion is, uh, Wyndham isn't even one of the Greater Haverhill Chamber of Commerce communities. So it strikes me as a little odd that an out-of-state speaker, out-of-state venue, out-of-the-district venue uh, is uh, having this event. Uh, probably the best invitation I've seen from them, though. It's a uh, red, white, and blue. Well, we know who they're supporting. Uh, but it's also going to be the last meeting, the annual meeting, last meeting for uh, Chamber President Sven Amerian and Vice President Jen Cantwell. And we do wish them well. Uh, we have some general concerns on this program about how the Chamber operates. For example, uh, Kids Fest. Someone said the chamber should thank the Open Mic Show and WHAV listeners for giving it so much attention uh, that uh, Kids Fest was relatively successful. Now, we didn't have an independent observer to be sure, but the, uh, the issue came down to where Coppola Bus Company uh, stepped up free buses and they provide school buses, you know, five days a week, so obviously they know how to do it for. Uh, travel, uh, provide transportation to young children. They provided it. They wanted to provide it. Uh, they're insured. They were willing. No charge. Never. We never learned why the Chamber of Commerce turned them down. All right, we have to take a brief break. You're going to hear uh, one of our movie review. No, no, this is the Mass Moments uh, time. You're going to hear about what happened on this day in history in Massachusetts. And then we'll be back. It's real brief. We'll be back right after that. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. WHAV is on Facebook. For quick access, visit whav.net and click on the Facebook icon. Open Mic! Every Monday night, the Open Mic Show brings interesting guests into your homes, presents your take on current events, and dabbles in little-known local history. I'm Tim Coco, your host, inviting you to join the Chorus of Community Voices beginning at 6.30, Monday nights, right here on WHAV. You may also watch this 50-year staple of democracy live at WHAV.TV and Haverhill Community Television, Channel 22. The Open Mic Show was brought to you by Northern Essex Community College, the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council, and WHAV member. Remember, only local radio can bring you this talk opportunity, but only WHAV does. 
Expect more from Northern Essex. With campuses in Haverhill and Lawrence, Northern Essex Community College is the only state college located in the Lower Merrimack Valley region of Massachusetts. Northern Essex offers over 70 associate degree and certificate programs in the areas of health, business, computers and technology, criminal justice, liberal arts, and more. NECC also provides hundreds of non-credit courses designed for career growth and personal enrichment. For more information, visit necc.mass.edu. Expect more from Northern Essex. Today is June 23rd. On this day in 1831, the legislature granted the Massachusetts Horticultural Society permission to purchase land for use as an experimental garden and a rural cemetery. Located on the border of Cambridge and Watertown, the garden failed, but the cemetery became world famous. As the first rural cemetery in America, Mount Auburn pioneered the idea of burying the dead not in urban churchyards, but in a beautifully designed naturalistic landscape on the outskirts of the city. The idea caught on and eventually led to the creation of public parks in metropolitan areas. 174 years after the cemetery was consecrated, the dead are still being laid to rest along Mount Auburn's winding paths, in her wooded dells, and on her gentle hillsides. For more about this and other Mass Moments, go online to massmoments.org. Brought to you by the Massachusetts Foundation for the Humanities. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by Northern Essex Community College. Expect more at Northern Essex. Well, that's, uh, I guess, we're back on Haverhill Community Television. Thank you very much, folks out there. Those of you who are just seeing me for the first time, let me uh, tell you uh, that I uh, ran into uh, a prominent WHAV listener, Marcel, yesterday at the Whittier uh, Annual Summer Meeting at the Birthplace. And Marcel was either very, very kind uh, or nearsighted, I'm not sure which, but she uh, told me I, I looked younger in person. So the only thing I could think of is I wasn't wearing a suit coat, so uh, I'm not going to wear one tonight. We'll see what happens. And truth be told, it's just uh, we found the air conditioning was a little slow and cooling off the room. So uh, it's more comfortable this way. And, you know, Jack Bevilacqua, when he was a um, host of the program, often commented that uh, these long summer days, when we have beautiful weather and, and longer sun sunlight, people tend to go outside and aren't necessarily paying attention to the open mic show. Now, one way he uh, used to test to see if people actually were listening and just not distracted by uh, the hamburgers burning on the grill or what have you, he would ask about food. He asked about your favorite summer ice cream or your favorite pizza. Well, I guess I'm desperate, so I'm going to ask you, where are you going for ice cream this summer? Uh, some of the choices are Carter's. Uh, that was a longtime favorite of Jack's, and maybe mine as well. Hodgie's. Is that Hodgie's still open on Route 110? Amesbury, I think Amesbury, Merrimack. And then, um, you know, I guess Dairy Queen. Are they still around? No Dairy Queens, no DQs? Uh, maybe one of our listeners can let us know. There used to be a nice one on the way to, say, Crane Beach in Ipswich. There used to be a nice one on the road um, probably past Route 1. So where's your favorite summer ice cream place? Or are you one of those adventurous ones who makes it yourself? Uh, the best ice cream I ever had, my mother made, it was a really rich chocolate peanut butter, and I, I don't, she would beat Ben and Jerry's any day. Uh, but Ben and Jerry's is pretty good if you have to go to the store and buy it. Uh, Nate is furiously writing something down. 
And uh, Jack would also ask people what their favorite pizza was and where they went. Oh, yes, of course, Bigert's Ice Cream. That's a great choice, too, right near Whittier Birthplace. And we're actually very thankful to Bigert's. They usually provide uh, parking for those who are attending uh, the semi-annual, oh, biannual, I always mix those two up, uh, Whittier Snowbound Weekend. And that's uh, every uh, other year, so whichever one that is. All right. We were talking about news, and I'd like to continue that discussion if you'll indulge me. WHAV Today launched, we call it a public beta. That means things are still being worked out, but for the most part, uh, working quite well, launched a brand new uh, website that is very news intensive. Um, We've heard from many listeners over really the past few years uh, that with the cutbacks in newspapers and the over-reliance on volunteers at other kinds of media, that there really hasn't been a, um, a good alternative news source. So WHAV has stepped up. Brand new website. If you're watching on WHAV.TV or Haverhill Community Television Channel 22, there is uh, a screenshot, and uh, you'll you'll look at it. You can see the the main news story is the fact that there is a news story, uh, and it's the entrance to this room, the Edwin V. Johnson newsroom. Uh, stories there. There is now um, movies. The text version of our, our Take Two movie review feature, which you'll actually hear in about an hour uh, during one of the breaks. And there's sports, Nate Webster's NASCAR recap now on the website. All of news director Dana Esmol's uh, stories, lots of police items, uh, unfortunately, and uh, stories uh, from City Hall. This is uh, likely the most comprehensive local news website ever created. And I, I know that sounds boastful, but this is very advanced, and I hope you'll check it out at whav.net. If you use your smartphone, the pages will automatically reformat to that phone. If you're using a computer, well, you have all kinds of choices. But this is a nonprofit radio station, so uh, Nate, we have a, a wanted sign I'd like to put up. Now, I know many of you uh, are looking for something to do. Well, maybe you're not, but maybe you'll help. We need some good photographers. Uh, some of the photography you see on the new WHAV website is from our own Nathan E. Webster III, public affairs manager, sports writer, uh, producer of the Open Mic Show, probably some other titles, uh, and most of them volunteer. So if you would help us, we could use some photographers to take some more uh, photos. General photos from around town, all the standard sites, uh, the courthouse, city hall, downtown, before and after photos maybe, uh, after the demolition ball comes back through downtown Haverhill. But this is to build a library and say a radio station needing photographs. Well, in this new age of electronic media, uh, WHAV is committed to providing uh, colorful and comprehensive uh, web coverage as well as audio coverage. And this is a big step toward that. So if you're a photographer, amateur or not, if you can turn out something, uh, we're in your debt. And then, of course, uh, news correspondents. Now, Dana Esmol is the paid news director of WHAV, but some of you may be blogging, or maybe you want to learn more about writing in associated press style, writing objectively and accurately. WHAV will train you if you would like to volunteer to cover uh, events. Maybe there are one-offs. You just want to go to a event and cover it. Maybe record some sound on your phone, but optional. We will have some more equipment for doing that, and you'll learn about that too in audio editing. But as little or as much as you can take on, if you just want to write it, that would be wonderful. And, so, and then, um, what else was on my list? Nate, he took my he took my cheat sheet off the screen. Web editors was another another option, and that means someone who wants to come in perhaps in the morning before your regular day and help Dana put all the news on the website. 
The website is free. There's two things that are quite unique about WHAV new news website. It's free, 100% free, no paywalls, no other ways. If you want to become a WHAV member, we certainly won't discourage that. And there's some bonus material for WHAV members, like uh, the 60th anniversary special of WHAV is available for downloading if you're a member. So there's some bonus points, but all the news is free. The second point is WHAV is the last and only Haverhill base news source. So that's very important when the uh, city once was home to the Eagle Tribune, the Haverhill Gazette, and before that, the uh, Haverhill Record, uh, the Haverhill Enterprise, the Haverhill Independent. Uh, I'm leaving one out, I think. In any event, uh, well, back to the Haverhill Journal. It depends how far back you want to go. And now... Tom Stites of the Banyan Project uh, has called Haverhill a news desert. Well, folks, we're providing you with an oasis. Now, WHAV is also a uh, proponent of a, uh, another news initiative called Haverhill Matters. Now, Haverhill Matters has been uh, on the drawing boards for oh, maybe three years now, and should it come into being, uh, WHAV would like to be a subscriber to it in the same way newspapers, radio, and television are subscribers to a newswire like the Associated Press or United Press International. So if uh, Haver Matters does come about, WHAV is supportive and will pay a, um, a fee uh, whenever that is determined uh, to bring you any additional coverage they may offer. But news can't wait. I often say that two years ago, when I ran for Senate, and I'm not a candidate now, so don't worry, <laughs> well, two years ago, uh, I was uh, surprised, and have been much more observant since, that there's virtually no coverage of politics. Very little. Now, when I was a full-time reporter, news was like a horse race. You know, uh, this candidate said that. The next day, there was a response. The day after, the paper conducted their own independent review. Uh, Follow-up the day after, more news stories. Well, the big newspapers are no longer big. They're really small, uh, both in the size of their staffs and in the uh, size of their products. And uh, someone has to help make sure you get the news because without the news how do you know who to vote for how do you know which candidates represent the views that that you value the most and so that is very important job of news if you have comments on news or anything else this is your program this is the open mic show we're going to go to national news from fsn local news with WHAV's own news director dana esmo and then nascar race recap with our own nathan e webster the third sometimes known as nate so we'll be back quite a bit ahead stay tuned open mic Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 701. WHAV Merrimack Valley. WHAV is a not-for-profit service of Public Media of New England Incorporated. It's heard on 1640 AM, the web, at whav.net and participating cable television stations. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. 
U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has said that Washington's support for Iraqi security forces will be intense and sustained as they try to battle Sunni insurgents in the country who've now captured two key border posts. Mr. Kerry was speaking during a press conference in Baghdad after holding talks with Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki about the crisis. From Washington, here's Lorna Shattuck. Baghdad is John Kerry's third stop in a tour of Middle Eastern capitals as he calls on Iraq's allies to press the country's Prime Minister, Nouri al-Maliki, to govern in a more inclusive, less sectarian manner. After holding almost two hours of talks with Mr. al-Maliki, the U.S. Secretary of State reiterated Washington's backing for Iraqi forces in their fight against ISIS militants. Washington hasn't publicly called for Mr. al-Maliki to step down, but has criticized him for alienating Iraq's Sunni minority and thus fueling the insurgency. At his press conference on Monday, Mr. Kerry also insisted that no country, the U.S. included, has the right to pick Iraq's leaders. But he added that Mr. al-Maliki has reaffirmed his commitment to form a new government by the first of July. Draconian, chilling, and a deeply disturbing setback to Egypt's transition. That's the U.S. State Department's description of the seven-year prison sentences handed down to three Al Jazeera journalists on Monday. It comes just 24 hours after U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry announced he would be releasing more than $500 million in frozen military aid to the country. Now he's calling on President al-Sisi to review all sentences and verdicts pronounced during the last few years. Kate Fisher has more. In a statement, John Kerry said injustices like these couldn't stand if Egypt was to move forward in the way that he says President al-Sisi told him just yesterday that he aspires his country to advance. Al Jazeera journalist Sue Turton, who was also sentenced today but in absentia, says she's devastated the US government has restored military aid while her colleagues are still in prison. That is a huge blow. One of the bargaining chips that the West still had with Egypt has now gone and we have nothing to show for it. John Kerry says he's calling on President al-Sisi to consider all available remedies, including pardons. A Sudanese woman who was sentenced to death after marrying a Christian man is free from jail, according to her lawyer. Miriam Ibrahim faced the death penalty for abandoning Islam under Sharia law. She was pregnant at the time and gave birth in jail. Her husband, Daniel Wani, is an American citizen. He says he wants to get his family out of Sudan as soon as he can. International outcry put pressure on Sudanese authorities to overturn her sentence. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Here's what's happening in local news. Another grand opening in recent weeks for upgrades at a Haverhill City Park. Haverhill Mayor James J. Fiorentini will open a new playground equipment area at Riverside Park on Monday at 2.30 p.m. The new state-of-the-art equipment was added to some existing playground equipment to enhance the playground area for families. This $35,000 project was in the fiscal year 14 budget and has been a priority for the mayor to complete. Mayor Fiorentini stated, quote, We can never have too many areas for families to enjoy their leisure time. This new playground equipment was in my 2014 fiscal year budget, and I am thrilled to have it ready for the summer, end quote. Three people facing charges of shoplifting in two separate incidents over the weekend at Central Plaza in downtown Haverhill. Police report 55-year-old Helen D. Sheehan of Haverhill was arrested Saturday afternoon at Central Plaza on a single count of shoplifting. In a separate incident late Friday morning, 24-year-old Samantha Gallum and 30-year-old Dennis Barnes, both of Haverhill, were each taken into custody on shoplifting charges. Barnes is also charged with driving to in danger. The incidents remain under investigation. In sports, WHAV's Nate Webster has this week's NASCAR race recap. Carl Edwards was your winner at Sonoma Raceway. This was his first road course win and second one of the season. He's now locked into the chase for the Spring Cup. Edwards talks about how special this win was to him. It's been a pretty long climb. Boris um, taught me you know, all the basics of road racing. To be able to, to come here and to win this race 10 years later is really special. To, to be locked into the chase is huge. The real special part to me was I mean, to stand in victory lane at Sonoma and have Jeff Gordon come and, and give me a handshake as a second-place finisher means a lot. Plenty of cautions in the race, including Landing Castle blowing up on lap 31. Matt Kenseth goes hard into the tire barrier 
and gets his first DNF at the track. Jamie McMurray gets into Clint Boyer. Boyer goes for a spin and collects Kevin Harvick, who has no place to go. The 31 of Ryan Newman gets into Denny Hamlin late in the race. Your top 10 were Carl Edwards, Jeff Gordon, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Jamie McMurray, Paul Menard, Casey Kane, Jimmy Johnson comes in 7th, Marcus Ambrose, Greg Biffle, and Clint Boyer. For Ray's Recap, Nate Webster, WHAV Sports. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Dana Esmel. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best. With wave weather, clear to partly cloudy for the Merrimack Valley through the night. Low temperature mostly back in the mid to upper 50s. During the day on Tuesday, partly sunny and close to 80 during the afternoon. Some clouds at night, slight chance of a shower, a little bit more humid in the 60s. And I think certainly more humid on Wednesday with occasional sun, maybe a few showers. High temperature Wednesday, 80. Showers likely Wednesday night ending Thursday. This is Gary Best, your next wave weather in 30 minutes. This is Pacifica Radio for the Merrimack Valley, WHAV. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. And welcome back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, to the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by Northern Essex Community College. Expect more at Northern Essex. If you look at the new WHAV website, you'll see an ad for Northern Essex Community College talking about their new eye health program. If you're interested in... Um, nursing or a health field and have been unable to fit into the the normal classrooms check out eye health at northern essex community college i'm going to when uh, nate has a moment we're going to demonstrate uh, how the new website works on a smartphone and i have one here to demonstrate now those of you who are, are watching will notice there's going to be a slight delay because WHAV delays its stream when it goes out uh, for a variety of purposes, mostly relating to uh, buffering so that your uh, player can play the stream uh, without interruptions. Now, I'm not sure how uh, where Nate is on this, but here is the mobile version of the website. Now, uh, if you hold your phone in one uh, orientation, you, and if you have an iPad, it works too, you'll see it one way. And then it automatically resizes if you turn your phone the other way. But what is nifty, we like that word nifty, there is a pop-up player. I'm going to have let Nate zoom in on that. There's a pop-up player. And it works on any phone, works on a desktop computer. But what's, what's really nice about it is you just simply... Your computer will start automatically, but on your your um, smartphone player, and it works on. And you can see there's a little bit of a delay, and then you have this this button here. So if you're interested, you can press this button, and it will take you. I, I, of course, I hit the wrong button because I wasn't looking at it. It will take you to a pop-out player, much larger, so that you can. And that's a button right there, and you can expand it to fit your phone. If you look real carefully at it, you'll see some open mic show guests who are on the um, the picture on the player. This is uh, what is known in the trade as an HTML5 player. Uh, what that means is on your Apple products, Macs, and iPhones, uh, if you cannot install Flash on an iPhone, uh, but this uh, takes care of that for you, so it works just fine. And if you're on your computer, 
Well, you don't even have to press the play button. It'll begin automatically. So some people who are looking around for it, well, we've made it a lot easier. And this is all part of a WHAV commitment to bring continuing news, up-to-date news, to Haverhill and the Merrimack Valley free of charge. On the door to this room, I'm going to let Nate uh, zoom back out, and uh, on the door to this room, uh, there is a plaque in honor of Edwin V. Johnson, who was WHAV's longer-serving employee. And something he said, yeah, Nate's going to play with the camera. Let's see how well this goes. Um, on the door to this room is the plaque. And what's really important is what Ed Johnson's legacy is. He demonstrated a commitment to objectivity, accuracy, and truth in reporting during his 34-year career with the station. This is important today because we're, we're flooded with all kinds of, of things called news, but they're really not, not by Ed Johnson's definition, not by Barney Gallagher's definition, not by... Jim Simmons definition, uh, longtime uh, mentors of mine. News should be presented without adjectives. Now this is an opinion program, so we do adjectives in opinions, just like they do adjectives in uh, editorial columns in newspapers. Uh, but news should be presented free of bias. If you can't figure out what the reporter's point of view is, that is ideal because the reporter should not let on if he or she has one. So I'd like to talk about news. Last week we began the discussion, what is news? And the news manual that was uh, presented in part but with some funds from the United Nations uh, to help uh, new nations or developing nations uh, work on news coverage because news is vital to democracy. They came up with four criteria. Is it new? Is it unusual? Is it interesting or significant? Is it about people? I think uh, Ed Johnson, Barney Gallagher, and Jim Simmons would agree that's a great starting place. Now, people do complain about negative stories. And as uh, Barney or, or others in the newsroom uh, once said, well, news can't be about the houses that did not burn down last night. There is room for positive stories, however, and those are usually called features. Now, there are some features on the brand new WHAV website, such as the Haverhill Heritage Series, which talks about uh, some of the guests who have been on this program, like Ken Smith, uh, and the story of two banks downtown, Pentucket and City Five Cent Savings Bank. That's all there, too. Those are features. Other kinds of features might be like David Goudswitz's article, Hannah Dustin and the Mysterious mysterious mostly missing monument if you don't know the story of the monument to Hannah Dustin that was repossessed and now is in Barrie Massachusetts well you want to check out the new WHAV news website at WHAV.net news reporting though is not for the faint of heart news has been called the fourth estate uh, what that means generally is in the early days, uh, English essayist uh, William Hazlitt, who died in 1830, uh, thought the fourth estate was to help keep in check the other estates of clergy, nobility, and commoners. Today we think about as keeping in check our government. If, uh, if it weren't for the news media, we might never have known about Watergate, for example, the scandal that toppled President Nixon. Without the news media, you might not have heard, well, I'll talk about all, cr all across the aisle. You might not have heard about Benghazi. You might not have heard about other news stories. The news media helps keep politicians honest, and it helps you decide who you should vote for. So many people are discouraged about voting. Haverhill's turnout is very low. For example, Methuen very low. Uh, when uh, there are more registered voters, but even all the registered voters together, what, 
less than half of the residents of those communities. So news helps people become empowered. Democracy is reliant on the fourth estate, I've written, uh, so as to ensure the dealings of government and entrenched interests are known to the people. What, other, what do I mean by entrenched interests? Well, let's face it, the big corporations have their own reasons uh, for you not to know about certain things. Anything from automobile defects that, thanks to the media, become recalls, or how they're feeing your banks, bank accounts so that you're paying 1,000% interest because you made the mistake of doing an overdraft at Dunkin' Donuts or better yet, Heavenly Donuts, my favorite. Anyway, we're going to talk a little bit more about the news, but your calls are very important, too. Feel free. Open lines, open mic, 978-374-1900. Also take entries for free pass to Whittier Birthplace and a free birthday cake or anniversary cake. So stay tuned. We'll be back after Community Spotlight, which incidentally is another important news feature. We'll be right back. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978 374 1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not for profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Try listening to WHAV in your car or anywhere on your mobile phone. For fast access, visit whav.net. Community Spotlight is brought to you by Haverhill Bank. Haverhill Bank is a generous supporter of the area's civic and cultural program. That's all it takes, it's just one bank. Haverhill Bank, Community Spotlight. The Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce is having a business networking mixer on Wednesday, June 25th from 5 to 7.30 p.m. at the Renaissance Golf Club, 377 Canosa Street, Haverhill. This event includes hors d'oeuvres and beverages, member displays, raffle and door prizes, and a chance to mingle with other chamber members and guests. Cost is $10 per person for members and $20 for non-members. To register, call the chamber at 978-686-0900 or visit their website at www.merrimackvalleychamber.com. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the Contact tab at whav.net or email news at whav.net. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Nate Webster. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by Northern Essex Community College. Expect more at Northern Essex. And if you thought just because it's summer, there's nothing happening in college classes, well, you'll be surprised at Northern Essex. It's a very busy place with summer school and special programs. So, uh, you, had to, you know, if you want to make a call to Northern Essex and sign up, there's plenty of people there who will help you. Well, Nate, uh, oh, wait a minute there. David Godswood writes, I see the chat board is working. It wasn't a moment ago, and not that I know of. Uh, David Godswood, who is uh, our resident Thai critic, says, wearing a tie from this decade might help me look younger, too. See, I, you know, I, I don't think I've ever worn this tie on the Open Mic Show, and I'm sure David Godswood's going to say he knows why. Uh, but um, I'm still waiting for my piece of orange carpeting from City Hall, uh, because David thinks I could fashion that into a more stylish tie. So thank you very much, David. You know, I was thinking this could be a, a way, though, if, um, if your charity has a, a special tie you want me to wear to promote your charity, I'll certainly um, work that in. 
the Haverhill Rotary Club uh, once presented us, and maybe I can find it, with uh, duck ties for their annual, um, what's it called, the duck dump? <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, yeah, the rubber duck regatta. <laughs> They throw them off the bridge, uh, they're all tagged, and uh, the duck that crosses the finish line, the winner gets all kinds of prizes. I think last year it was like $10,000 uh, from Rockingham Toyota. So uh, I'll wear your tie if that helps. I kind of like the sound of duck dump, but no, I guess the Rotary wants to call it the rubber duck regatta. All right. Uh, Nate was at Relay for life Friday night. Maybe you were there too. I'm going to ask Nate to come on screen, share the, share the screen space with me, and I'm going to ask him some thoughts. And he has, uh, speaking of prizes, apparently he won something. And uh, maybe he'll tell us about that. I think he's trying to get his camera on. And uh, did we lose the feed to that camera when we rebooted the system? Oh, maybe. Well, I might have to just listen to Nate then. You'll have to watch me and my tie from another decade. You know what? David may be correct. This may not be from this decade. My, my, my. What happens when you get older? Well, anyway, did you go to Relay for Life? Nate did. Are you there, Nate? Did you get your camera working or no? I cannot find my camera. All right, we'll have to, uh, you know, Sonny, we knew something would go wrong uh, when we had to replace that software today. It's been the, been the technology day. But speaking of technology, Nate, you won something at Relay for Life. Tell us how that works. I did. Um, I actually entered a um, drawing. We don't call them raffles. You'll get slapped in the hand if you call it a raffle. It's a drawing. Uh, raffle entered. is a legal term, I think. But I think drawing is, most people would say they're the same thing. Yeah, we have to call it a drawing at Relay because we're not allowed to call it a raffle because raffle in, uh, includes gambling. So we're not allowed to say that we're gambling, so we're doing drawings. So, in other words, Nate gambled on winning this prize. Yeah, Go I on. did. <laughs> um, I bought uh, a few raffle uh, drawing tickets. See, there you go again. <laughs> you got me going now. I bought a few drawing tickets, and I won a um, brand new Microsoft Surface tablet. Microsoft Surface. You know, the first thing uh, Nate did, or not the first thing, because uh, we didn't launch the new website till today, but he... Um, Put on uh, WHAV's new website at WHAV.net. And what happened, Nate? Um, I got the player that automatically started playing. See, so much easier. I've heard from a number of WHAV uh, listeners um, who are relatively new to technology and saying, well, I, I don't know what button to push. Or, you know, they're, they're expecting, you know, those real switches that you saw like Apollo 11 spacecraft. And now these are more touch oriented. So uh, your new tablet is both touch and keyboard? Um, I actually had to purchase the keyboard that actually magnetically plugs in to the bottom of the tablet. Oh, uh, really? So now so I have a keyboard. All right, so uh, this is what happens when you get something free. Anyone ever receive a free cat or a free dog? Then all the vet bills come? Yep. <laughs> well, so Nate has a, a free tablet, and all the bills came. Uh, have you told your wife that you spent some money on that? I did, yeah. Yeah, you got to tell her. I mean, she's the one who <laughs> is in charge of all that stuff, so you got to tell her that you spent the money, because if you don't, you'll be in the doghouse. Oh, it goes back to my vet analogy. All right, so tell us how, how the event went. Did it, did it start on time? Any um, Anything to jump out at you? Uh, we were not there until Saturday morning. Okay, um, Saturday at Northern Essex Community College. It Relay started Friday. Life. It started Friday I know, but at 3 you were there. We, we were there Saturday morning. We walked the track for about an hour, an hour and a half, and um, we were part of the um, Penteket Bank team, and um, we took... Everyone took shifts, and everyone took like an hour or two out of the day and walked because the team from Pawtucket Bank is so huge that everyone only has to take an hour and walk the track. So, because, I mean, there's 24 hours that would they're there, 3 p.m. Friday to 3 p.m. Saturday. Now, WHAV so. had a relay team. Uh, uh, we'd have to do it uh, 12 hours each, I right, think. Right, exactly, yeah. <laughs> maybe if we include Dana, it'd be uh, eight hours each. Yeah, but, maybe. You know. Maybe we could involve Mark. We could get it down to four. So, yeah, there you go. Yeah, no, And if you, throw in a couple, if you throw in a couple uh, interns, you'll get it down to two. So, 
All right, so uh, we're working on it. Yes. So, uh, any, anything uh, strike you as different this year? Any new booths, new entertainment, uh, um, tributes? No, the DJ has been the same DJ for a few years. Um, he is very good. He comes highly recommended. Um, the booths were pretty much set up in the same fashion. They were always set up in the tents, the, the camping sites, around the track uh, um, in the grass area. They did have, oh, that's right, they did have the jail and bail, which I started, my daughter and I started that uh, four years ago when I started Relay. Actually, seems to me, did you have a photo on your Facebook page? I had a photo of me getting arrested, correct. Oh, actually, let's, uh, let's during the, the break for weather, let's see if Nate will get that photo on screen. I did see that on Facebook. Yeah, I did get arrested and get thrown in the paddy wagon. Um, and it looked like a real paddy wagon. It was a real paddy wagon from the Essex County Sheriff's Department. A real paddy wagon. Ah, see, that's why it looked like a real paddy wagon. All right. And one of the uh, the event chair's husband is actually a sheriff that works there. Oh, uh, really? Yes. The sheriff or a deputy sheriff? Uh, he's a he's a. Um, oh, I I can't think of what he is. Uh, he works in the Essex County Sheriff's Department. He's one of the top guys there. So. All right. Not the sheriff himself. No, Mr. He's, Cousins. No, he's uh, he is a. Lieutenant? I know or? Sheriff Cousins does make it out to quite a few events. He's yeah. he's pretty active for a sheriff. He's a he's a he's a lieutenant or he's a captain or he's somewhere up there. He's pretty high, so all right. So uh Nate uh you know, as we talk to him more, he comes up with new things, he forgets about these things. All right, mm -hmm. so <laughs> yeah. let's uh let's let's hope he can have that photo for us so we can see what Nate looks like in a paddy wagon. Yeah, maybe after the break I'll get it up on screen for you. All right, and that way that'll take place and then remind me uh after the broadcast, Nate, to find out what's going on with your camera. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> All right, folks, did you go to Relay for Life at Northern Essex Community College? A great event. Oh Nate, do you have any sense of how much was raised? I got to make him go back to the microphone. The more important stuff. I know that when we had guests on the program, they were hoping for a big record year. They were hoping for a two hundred thousand dollar year. Um, I don't think they achieved it. From what I could see, the figures were around one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty thousand. So, but they were still like counting. What happens is at the end of the relay, they count up what they have turned in by the teams and by the sponsors. And inevitably, there's always a promise check that hasn't arrived yet for five or six thousand or a big amount. So it, it could still happen. So it could still happen, but I mean, typically by August, they want to have all the fee the the figures in uh, from all the teams that haven't turned any money in that day of relay, and by August 31st, they want to have the grand total in. So I mean, still a long ways off to two hundred thousand, but um, you know, they might they might get close to 160 170 that they usually raise every year so all right well let's uh we'll we'll certainly stay up to date on that mm -hmm. all right we're going to take a, a brief break for local weather yet another whab news feature now when i say local weather if you've listened to those uh boston radio stations or watched those boston television stations they have such a large area to cover uh that they try to just kind of do an average and so they might tell you about the weather in hull but as you know, the North Shore and the Merrimack Valley is specifically very different. That's why Rob Carroll and Gary Best and the entire meteorological team here at WHAV bring you weather right here in the Merrimack Valley. And they are based right here in the Merrimack Valley, and that's why it's so accurate. And maybe that's why you heard the forecast, heard the weather was going to be nice, and you're outside cooking a hot dog instead of listening to the open mic show. So next time, take your phone with you and soon an FM radio. We'll take a break for weather. We'll be right back. Open mic! Tim Coco and the open mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 731. For live and local talk, listen to the Open Mic Show, 
Monday nights. You can also see the program at www.whav.tv. Only local radio can bring you this talk opportunity, but only WHAV does. Catch the wave! Here, don't forget your free ticket to the biggest theater in the world. Your seat is reserved for Modern Theater of the Mind every Tuesday night. WHAV presents Radio Theater Project, a new anthology series of comedies, dramas, mysteries, and science fiction. Tune in every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. or the encore performance at 1 a.m. Remember... Only local radio can bring you this feature opportunity, but only WHAV does. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best. With wave weather, clear to partly cloudy for the Merrimack Valley through the night. Low temperature mostly back in the mid to upper 50s. During the day on Tuesday, partly sunny and close to 80 during the afternoon. Some clouds at night, slight chance of a shower, a little bit more humid in the 60s. And I think certainly more humid on Wednesday with occasional sun, maybe a few showers. High temperature Wednesday, 80. Showers likely Wednesday night ending Thursday. This is Gary Best, your next wave weather in 30 minutes. WHAV! Open mic! From the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. I'm Tim Coco. Nathan E. Webster III is producing in Master Control. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. All right, Nate, did you find that photo or are you still working on it? Well, when Nate is ready, let me know a little ahead of time and uh, we'll show a photo of Nate under arrest at least the kind of arrest that takes place at Relay for Life, which took place this Friday and Saturday at Northern Essex Community College. A great uh, benefit to raise funds uh, for the American Cancer Society for research, for treatment, and for outreach. Now, while, uh, while Nate is doing that, uh, I want to share some comments uh, we received. Um, about the new website of course they're all over the place here uh, on Facebook uh, but let's see uh, well quite a few people have liked the post uh, a person named Mark not Mark LeMay uh, wrote uh, another news source in town that's easy to access more likes uh, Al writes very well done so quite a few positive comments. If you're on Facebook, you can do that. If uh, you're new to some of the technology, if you want to comment on news stories, you know, I know a lot of people say they miss the ability to comment on news stories on a local newspaper site. Well, you can do that right there at whav.net. Nate, how are we doing? He's still working on it. See, I keep bothering him. All right, let's talk a little bit about news. So we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to that. Now, here's another example of the importance of news and the role WHAV has played. In 2009, Groveland Public Access Television banned WHAV's audio from its system because of what town officials, it was specifically Greg the treasurer there, uh, unflattering uh, news about the town. Now this related to house building too close to Johnson's Pond, uh, in the opinion of then open mic show host Jack Bevilacqua, who did serve on the Grove and Board of Health for more than 30 years. So if anyone knows, Jack, Jack knew. And um, Jack uh, expressed concern about approval of septic systems near Johnson's Pond, which is Haverhill's backup drinking water source. WHAV did provide uh, balance, uh, invited and uh, 
and the person accepted, Grove on Selectman William Dark, appeared on the program. But nevertheless, this is when government is in control of the media. They took WHAV off the air. So people in Groveland, the, off the cable television system in Groveland, people in Groveland uh, no longer heard stories about their elected officials uh, not uh, obeying the rules. So thanks to the publicity surrounding the Groveland uh, controversy, WHV has Groveland listeners via the Internet because people will find the way. And that's another reason why WHAV has decided to apply for an FM license or has applied for an FM license to help counteract that kind of thing. All right, Nate is going to show us this photograph of himself. And there was one other person with you, right? No, it's just him. All right, just Nate. All right. Uh, if you're watching on WHAV.TV or Haverhill Community Television, you're either seeing or about to see Nate Webster as a jailbird at Relay for Life at Northern Essex Community College. Oh, there he is. You had handcuffs, too? Handcuffs. He's sitting in an actual jail vehicle, a single light above him. Did they feed you in there? Bread and water, nothing? Not even bread and water. How long did you have to stay in there, Nate? He's thinking. Ten hours? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's wrong. I would have put him in for ten hours, but so much for that. How much did you have to pay to get out? Ten dollars. Okay, so a dollar a minute? He's not sure. Maybe we should have kept him in for 10 hours. We might have gotten closer to, to meeting the, um, the amount needed for Relay for Life. Okay. Nate Webster, WHAV Public Affairs Director, producer of the Open Mic Show, and Jailbird. All right, what, do you, what do you folks think about that? All right, we're still taking birthday and anniversary contestants. Thanks to our friends at LBD's Italian Bakery, 140 South Main Street, uh, in the Bradford section of Haverhill. We're giving away a 7-inch birthday cake, your choice of chocolate or vanilla. All you have to do is call the program and wish someone, including yourself, a happy birthday or a happy anniversary, and your name will be placed into the hat for a drawing next week. WHAV is taking June and July birthdays right now, so call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. And perhaps you'll be, or the person you name will be a lucky winner next week of a free cake from LBD's Italian Bakery, second generation uh, bakery. They're in uh, the Bradford section, sort of what, well, I think we, some people call it Bradford Square, but it's actually Central Square is what it's really called. That's the other thing uh, we like to do is make sure people know the history of the city or town they're in. So just when, if you're the winner, you're going to receive a letter from WHAV. You call in your order, so you'll get a nice fresh baked cake and your choice of chocolate or vanilla and so on. And uh, give them at least 24 hours notice so they can make it for you. And then bring your WHAV letter, your original, not a copy, so that you can uh, pick it up. Uh, Nate is looking for the missing board. Uh, it used to be down there. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's funny. We have high tech website, high tech streaming, high tech everything else, but we still use marker boards uh, for sending messages during this program. It's uh, quiet and easy and works somewhat. If you want to comment, go to whav.tv. On the bottom of the screen is a place to write messages. I'm trying to check that. Uh, when I can. Let's see if there's anything else there besides comments about my uh, decade-old tie. No, look at this. Uh, let's see. I, I'm not even sure I understand David's comment, but it's something to do with Nate. Like getting tossed on the hooskow. What is that? is an isolated incident in Nate's sordid past. What's a hooskow? 
Did I pronounce it right? Oh, I mean, it's just a, a word I'm not familiar with. It's the same as slammer. Slammer. Well, see, maybe it's this a slang. Like getting tossed in the hooskow is an isolated incident in Nate's sordid past. Oh, so he's accusing you of having a sordid past. Where did you really get that computer? <laughs> All right. Yeah, uh, David keeps us honest here. And again, that's the importance of the fourth estate. All right, some great comments about the new WHAV website. Would you like to help pay for the news? We'd certainly like that. Uh, most everyone here is a volunteer, including myself. And all of this technology comes from listener donations, some corporate underwriting, local corporations, not the, the giants we rail against, and um, just supporters like yourself. Now, WHAV has uh, strengthened its membership opportunities. You'll see those on the website at the membership page. Uh, we've taken out a category and made others even more affordable. So if um, you don't have any money but would still like to comment on a news story, you can register for free. If you would like to get a bumper sticker, a membership card, subscription to newsletters, access to the archive on the new website, uh, $25 or more, or $10 if you're a student or senior citizen. And it goes from there. So check out the membership page at whav.net. But uh, Nate is uh, quite willing to take your information over the phone. Uh, we can send you a uh, bill. You can pay by credit card. Or Nate will give you a check. <laughs> no, <laughs> Nate will give you an address. <laughs> That'll get better bringing money if you give them checks, won't it? <laughs> Nate, <laughs> Freudian slip. Nate will give you the address where you can send a check. So call right now, 978-374-1900. The new FM station is going to be quite costly. A brand new transmitter and uh, rent for the tower that it's going to go on. Um, if you don't want 24-hour begathons on WHAV in the coming months, help us reduce that by making your contribution today. $10 for students and senior citizens, $25 and up. For the rest of you, call 978-374-1900. If you want to comment on anything and you're too shy to dial, well, you can use the message board at whav.tv right below the screen. You can email me directly at tcoco. Let me see if there's anything there because I haven't checked, actually. Uh, tcoco at whav.net. That's T-C-O-C-O -C -O at whav.net. If you're shy, we'll do that. If you want to win a prize, however, you must call 978-374-1900. All right, well, emails are coming in, but it's mostly, as they call, spam, junk mail, so we'll see. Uh, my, my clock tells me it's quarter to eight. We have a segment from Take Two Movie Reviews, and again, part of the news coverage, you'll find text versions of Take Two Movie Reviews on the new website, at whav.net. We'll be right back with more of the Open Mic Show. Open Mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Are you listening to WHAV on cable television? If so, join WHAV in thanking the board, staff, and members of your local public access channel. 
Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. They're attracted by the region's technology and innovation, housing and education, workforce, arts, culture and recreation, and convenient location and easy access. Learn more and look at profiles of all 24 cities and towns at the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council website at merrimackvalley.info. Open mic! Every Monday night, the Open Mic Show brings interesting guests into your homes, presents your take on current events, and dabbles in little-known local history. I'm Tim Coco, your host, inviting you to join the Chorus of Community Voices, beginning at 6.30, Monday nights, right here on WHAV. You may also watch this 50-year staple of democracy live at WHAV.TV and Haverhill Community Television, Channel 22. The Open Mic Show was brought to you by Northern Essex Community College, the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council, and WHAB member. Remember, only local radio can bring you this talk opportunity, but only WHAB does. This is Take Two Movie Review. I'm Mike Friend. This week, a million ways to get grossed out in the West. To the relatively short list of motion pictures classified as Western spoofs, all of which are totally forgettable save for Mel Brooks classic Blazing Saddles, comes a new entry, Seth MacFarlane's A Million Ways to Die in the West. There's little need to worry about the plot, like as in Blazing Saddles, it's merely an artifice around which to exploit stereotypes and build toilet jokes and grotesque sight gags. Given the appearance of some very funny and talented people, including MacFarlane himself, Sarah Silverman, Neil Patrick Harris, Giovanni Ribisi, and even Bill Maher for a minute in comedic roles, plus some A-list acting support from Charlize Theron and Liam Neeson for some more demanding roles, the movie never quite engages like McFarlane's last successful and critically acclaimed Ted. This isn't to say there aren't laughs. They abound, actually, especially in a glorious dream sequence that begins after the Myers character mistakenly swallows a bowl of drugs intended for a whole tribe of Indians who had captured him. It's just that the picture would have been a lot funnier with some tighter editing and better scene execution and a runtime in the 100-minute range instead of nearly two hours. And it would have helped if not as many of the money shots from the various gags had been used in trailers and TV ads for what seems the better part of a year. These routines lose their punch, obviously, when you know how they're going to end. If you've managed to avoid more of those promotional pieces than this reviewer, you might dig this movie a little more. The star power brought to bear here doesn't make A Million Ways to Die in the West, the comic classic that some were expecting, but it does save it from duddom. You'll enjoy its debut on Stars. This has been Take Two Movie Review. I'm Mike Friend. Catch up with us at TakeTwoMovieReview.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter at Take Two underscore Review. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show. This hour of the Open Mic Show being brought to you by Northern Essex Community College. Expect more at Northern Essex. And also by Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council, as Nate has corrected me. I was, I was in a time warp. I was in the last hour. Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. Sorry, David. David Tibbetts is uh, the president of the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council, and I'm going to have to give him a, a few extra sentences for that, uh, for that. And we won't charge Northern Essex any extra for that. But, uh, you know, Dave Tibbetts, and there is also a new ad on WHIV's new website. I'm going to keep that going tonight. There's a new ad uh, for the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. And you might say, well, I don't own a business. I don't influence where a business locates, so that's not of interest to me. Well, Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council also puts out every week 
Merrimack Valley Happenings, and it's your one-stop shop. Absolutely free. You can get it in your email box or just read it at merrimackvalley.info. And it's every cultural event across the 24 cities and towns that compose uh, the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council District. Uh, you can find out uh, what performances are taking place, what public events are happening, and you'll also find out who's hiring and some new jobs when uh, they list the businesses. So it does have an impact on you. So merrimackvalley.info. Uh, sponsoring this hour of the open mic show and nate thank you very much for that and again sorry david we were talking a little bit about the news and i i do want to um to talk about some other aspects of the news you may have suspected this and it may be true uh, sometimes an advertiser can exercise undue influence on the media so maybe uh, threatening to withhold its advertising dollars so that a negative story, maybe contamination in your neighborhood, maybe high cancer rates they don't want you to know about, um, something they're doing wrong and they don't want you to know about it, they withhold advertising dollars at times. Well, WHAV is a nonprofit corporation. And although they're underwriting dollars from smaller businesses, uh, WHAV isn't funded by the large corporations. It's funded only by you. And that also helps um, defend the integrity of the news. As I write here, and I will release this shortly, sponsors and donors should realize the media must risk losing financial or other support in order to maintain public trust. In the long run, the loss of public trust means the loss of audiences that might otherwise have taken advantage of sponsors' offerings. What I'm saying here is that it's counterproductive to withhold your ad dollars because if you weaken the media, then fewer people will even see your, your future advertising or underwriting messages. And the same can be true about getting involved, uh, you know, reporters getting involved in clicks, clubs, uh, other places, uh, and then allow their integrity to be diminished because, well, they don't want to get their friends in trouble. They don't want to list the, the arrest log. And we find that all too often happens in both professional and unprofessional news organizations. The New York Times says its core purpose is to, quote, enhance society by creating, collecting, and distributing high-quality news, information, and entertainment. The Chicago Tribune leads its editorial policy with, quote, credibility is an indispensable asset, while USA Today says its job is to, quote, tell the truth as accurately and fairly as possible. All of these help influence WHAV's news policy. This is from uh, the cream of the crop among journalists. We have some photographs that we um, may be running. I have been paying attention to my monitor. Uh, we have some photographs of uh, Walter Cronkite, CBS newsman for many years, the anchor of the CBS Evening News. He was once called the most trusted man in America. That tells you something about broadcast news. I have often reported, having worked both in broadcast and print news, that I have found, generally speaking, print news uh, is more valuable uh, because of the journalism standards that more traditionally associated. And I'm trying to bring those print journalism standards to WHAV. And I think the entire team uh, is working toward that. In the broadcast arena, though, the BBC reports, quote, the public expects the information they receive from the BBC to be authoritative, and the guidelines accordingly place great stress on the standards of fairness, accuracy, and impartiality. Without these, the key role of the BBC in supporting an informed democracy cannot be achieved. The BBC goes on to list its values, which include trust, truth, accuracy, impartiality, editorial integrity, independence, no harm in offense, serving the public interest, fairness, privacy, children transparency, and accountability. 
uh, shows you the importance of this. Now, one of the things I have often remarked about the amateur attempts to replace the news, and these are often by well-intentioned people doing a volunteer uh, public access TV show or perhaps writing a blog, now that that is relatively easy on the Internet. Uh, but it's more involved to that. Uh, if it's called news, leave out the adjectives, leave out the qualifiers, and just express the news. Ed Johnson used to talk about the importance of actually having a monotone delivery in the newsroom. And some people say, well, that sounds boring. No, because he did not want you to think he had an opinion when he said, and this could be true today, that the city has a record $160 million budget before the city council. Well, that sounds like he's surprised, upset perhaps, so he would read it, $160 million budget before the city council. And that is uh, the importance. Tony Seaton, uh, former ABC producer for Barbara Walters, uh, gave a talk in Haverhill a few years ago for WHAV. Uh, it was a fundraiser for this very room, the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, and he also talked about that. Now, let me tell you about WHAV's objectivity before we go to news again. By the way, you know, I'm going to feel like Tom Bergeron t uh, today. Uh, I know that's a beautiful day out. Oh, and maybe you're a little bit lazy or you're eating that ice cream from Carter's and don't want to dial the phone. Uh, but <laughs> uh, Tom Bergeron once remarked that uh, he had a show without any phone calls at all, and he was getting close to reading his clothing labels. So, you know, please, well, of course, David Goudswood, you know, mentions this one, uh, this tie perhaps being uh, from another decade. Uh, it's a Neo by Bill Blass. See, now I've read my clothing label, so I can top Tom. How's that? All right. Telling the truth as accurately and fairly as possible requires distance between reporters and newsmakers, as I mentioned before. Since I am occasionally, me, Tim Coco, is occasionally a newsmaker, for example, WHAV News Director Dana Esmol has complete authority and, in fact, obligation to objectively report or ignore my public activities. If Esmol decides to report on something in which I am involved, he discloses my association with WHAV. He also avoids any hint of approval or disapproval, just as he would with any other news item. This is how strongly I feel about objectivity in news. I rarely even see uh, Dana in the newsroom. We actually work very different shifts. He's uh, uh, working uh, early, early mornings. Uh, but nevertheless, we need to maintain distance. And that is why WHAV is under the control of a nonprofit board of directors. And so these policies are enforced. Distance is governed by professional news organizations with many different rules. Uh, the New York Times has a few. Uh, I'll, I'll get to a couple of them and then we'll continue after the news. The New York Times says distance uh, is achieved by avoiding conflicts of interest or any appearance of conflict. No newsroom editorial page employee may exploit for personal gain any non-public information acquired at work or use an association with our news organizations to gain favor or advantage. That means, Nate, no free cakes for you. <laughs> no, and, and any employee. And that if you learn of something in the newsroom about a company, a public company being acquired, you can't use that information to go make a stock purchase before the sale is announced. These are all parts of the news process that most people don't even think about. No one at the New York Times may do anything that damages the news staff's reputation for strict neutrality in reporting on politics and government. In particular, no one may wear campaign buttons or display any other form of political partisanship while on the job. Good policies there. All right, we're going to go to uh, national news from FSN, local news with our own Dana Esmol. Nate Webster with NASCAR Race Recap, and then local weather. And that's going to go by pretty quickly. It's, it's uh, all capsulized uh, for your convenience. We'll be back after that. Open mic! 
Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. It's 801. WHAV Merrimack Valley. WHAV is a not-for-profit service of Public Media of New England, Incorporated. It's heard on 1640 AM, the web, at whav.net and participating cable television stations. From Feature Story News in Washington, I'm Rebecca Foster. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry has said that Washington's support for Iraqi security forces will be intense and sustained as they try to battle Sunni insurgents in the country who've now captured two key border posts. Mr. Kerry was speaking during a press conference in Baghdad after holding talks with Iraqi Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki about the crisis. From Washington, here's Lorna Shattuck. Baghdad is John Kerry's third stop in a tour of Middle Eastern capitals as he calls on Iraq's allies to press the country's Prime Minister, Nouri al-Maliki, to govern in a more inclusive, less sectarian manner. After holding almost two hours of talks with Mr. al-Maliki, the U.S. Secretary of State reiterated Washington's backing for Iraqi forces in their fight against ISIS militants. Washington hasn't publicly called for Mr. al-Maliki to step down, but has criticized him for alienating Iraq's Sunni minority and thus fueling the insurgency. At his press conference on Monday, Mr. Kerry also insisted that no country, the U.S. included, has the right to pick Iraq's leaders. But he added that Mr. al-Maliki has reaffirmed his commitment to form a new government by the of July. Draconian, chilling, and a deeply disturbing setback to Egypt's transition. That's the U.S. State Department's description of the seven-year prison sentences handed down to three Al Jazeera journalists on Monday. It comes just 24 hours after U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry announced he would be releasing more than $500 million in frozen military aid to the country. Now he's calling on President al-Sisi to review all sentences and verdicts pronounced during the last few years. Kate Fisher has more. In a statement, John Kerry said injustices like these couldn't stand if Egypt was to move forward in the way that he says President al-Sisi told him just yesterday that he aspired his country to advance. Al Jazeera journalist Sue Turton, who was also sentenced today but in absentia, says she's devastated the US government has restored military aid while her colleagues are still in prison. That is a huge blow. One of the bargaining chips that the West still had with Egypt has now gone and we have nothing to show for it. John Kerry says he's calling on President al-Sisi to consider all available remedies, including pardons. A Sudanese woman who was sentenced to death after marrying a Christian man is free from jail, according to her lawyer. Marianne Ibrahim faced the death penalty for abandoning Islam under Sharia law. She was pregnant at the time and gave birth in jail. Her husband, Daniel Wani, is an American citizen. He says he wants to get his family out of Sudan as soon as he can. International outcry put pressure on Sudanese authorities to overturn her sentence. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Here's what's happening in local news. Haverhill City Councilors on Tuesday will revisit the proposed future use of funds donated to the police department. At issue is whether to use nearly $368,000 from a trust fund to replace a leaking roof at the police headquarters on Bailey Boulevard. Mayor James J. Fiorentini has proposed using the funds from the D'Alessandro Trust account in order to expedite the new roof work sooner than an expected way to secure a loan for the project. The Haverhill City Council is expected to decide on the requested roof repair appropriation when it meets Tuesday night at 7 p.m. in the council chambers at Haverhill City Hall. Also, the Haverhill City Council is set to vote Tuesday on a finalized $159.8 million city budget for fiscal year 2015. Highlights of the city's spending plan for the next year beginning July 1st includes $1 million set aside as free cash, putting $400,000 into a city stabilization fund and $200,000 going to a school stabilization fund. 
More than $15.2 million of the budget would operate the self-sustaining water and wastewater departments, and they are expected to generate more than $769,000 in net receipts to go into the city's general fund. The city budget would also be funded by some $158 million in taxation and other receipts. In sports, WHAV's Nate Webster has this week's NASCAR race recap. Jeff Gordon gave it all he had at the final laps at Sonoma Raceway, but the hard-charging 24 car just couldn't close in on your race winner, Carl Edwards. This is Edwards' second one of the year, which locks him into the chase for the Sprint Cup. Gordon says he wishes he had the last five or six laps back to do over. Gosh, I, I wish I could have had those last five or six laps to do over. I think if I just stayed smooth and, and stuck with it, I might have had a, a shot at least putting more pressure on Carl to, to force him to make a mistake or maybe get a run. Uh, it, it was exciting you know, when they dropped the green that, that we did have a car like that. Trouble on the track when the two-car Brad Kozlowski gets spun by Kyle Busch. Casey Mears pits a lap 37 with fronting grill damage. Dale Jr. taps the car of A.J. Allmendinger going for the lead in turn 11. Jeff Gordon's pit crew had trouble with this tear off on the windshield. It would take them till later in the race to correct the problem. Matt Kenseth picks up a DNF at Sonoma when he crashes hard into the tire barrier. His front end is torn up and is done for the day. Tony Stewart comes out first in the last series of pit stops but loses spots when he was nailed for being too fast entering pit road. Nate Webster, WHAV Sports. Remember, WHAV is the only Haverhill-based news source, and it's always free. In the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom, this is Dana Esmel. Wave weather! I'm WHAV meteorologist Gary Best. With wave weather, clear to partly cloudy for the Merrimack Valley through the night. Low temperature mostly back in the mid to upper 50s. During the day on Tuesday, partly sunny and close to 80 during the afternoon. Some clouds at night, slight chance of a shower, a little bit more humid in the 60s. And I think certainly more humid on Wednesday with occasional sun, maybe a few showers. High temperature Wednesday, 80. Showers likely Wednesday night ending Thursday. This is Gary Best to your next wave weather in 30 minutes. Your donations enable WHAV to remain local and independent. Consider giving what you can afford at whav.net. From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. Welcome back to the Open Mic Show, a 50-year staple of democracy in the Merrimack Valley. This hour of the Open Mic Show is being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. Uh, there was a um, person on Facebook uh, posting, I think it was in the group, You Know You're From Haverhill When. He was uh, posting that one of the things he can't stand about me is that I talk too much. Well, folks, you could help. <laughs> Call me, 978-374-1900. Uh, the sun is going down. I'm talking too much, mostly because I have no one to listen to. So give me a call, 978-374-1900. Here's a shout-out to Milt, who thinks I talk too much. Okay, uh, here's your chance. Call I hear a phone ringing. That's a good sign. If you'd like to wish someone a happy birthday or a happy anniversary, including yourself, uh, now is your chance. We're taking June and July birthdays and anniversaries. Even if they're past, you can still receive a cake. All you have to do is call the Open Mic Show, talk to me, wish someone a happy birthday or happy anniversary, and your name will be put into the drawing. Not a raffle, as Nate tells me. Your name will be put into the drawing for a free 7-inch cake from our friends at LBD's Italian Bakery, 140 South Main Street in the Bradford section of Haverhill. That's near Central Square. Uh, this is a, a word to the newcomers. It's not Bradford Square, it's Central Square. All right, I know uh, the old-timers here 
uh, know the difference. And I'm not trying to pick on newcomers, uh, but one of the things I observed, I'm going to now go on to a tangent. Uh, when I visited uh, other countries, uh, one of the things uh, I learned, and of course I've heard this spoken of as well, is that you do as the locals do. You don't demand that they speak English. You don't demand that they drive on the right side of the road if you're in the UK. You work with them because it's theirs. A word of advice to some of the newcomers. There are many good old-time local residents, Haverhill, Methuen, Andover, all of these towns, Plasto and Sandown, uh, who know why things have happened the way they have. They also may disagree with those things, but I do find it just a bit frustrating when some of the newcomers come into town and then say, well, you should tear all this down. Well, been there, done that. We tore everything down during urban renewal and very little went back up. Very little that we're proud of anyway that went back up. So if you're a newcomer saying it's all disgusting, tear it all down, remember what you might lose. Many people here have lost streets, have lost homes, have lost their family-friendly businesses because of that type of attitude. I will say, however, I do want to do a thank you to some newcomers. You certainly can help open our eyes to some new ideas. Haverhill values diversity, and so also goes to Methuen and Andover and Sandown and Plasto that carry WHAV. Uh, there's, there's a good mix there as well. All right, I've been begging for a phone call. I guess I have one. Oh, I, I thought they hung up. <laughs> you are on the air, thank goodness. You know, it's, it's really kind of sad when you start reading the tie. I mean, Tom Bergeron used it as a joke, not a literal thing. Yeah, well, I had to. <laughs> and I'm sure you must agree with Milt that I talk too much, but what am I supposed to do? Thank you, David, for saving the day. David Godswood, open mic show historian and tie critic. Well, I, I'd like to say I have some pressing issue, but I got nothing. But when you start reading clothing, it's just, all right, maybe I better call and see how he's doing. Well, I'm a little concerned. All right, you saw the new website, and your books are listed under the... Um, uh, whatever section that is, the uh, uh, member shop. shop, yeah. And uh, we're still working on it. Um, the site Embarrassingly enough, I, last time I looked at it, you had just launched it. The, the uh, Amazon links or whatever they are had not replenished yet, so I actually haven't seen my books on the page. I've seen the blank page where they're going to be. Oh, I think they're working now. Well, uh, like I said, I was there real early. Oh, so you were, um, see, some people... Like David Goudswood, very observant and watching what's happening. All right, let me just let me t click on a link for David Goudswood here on the new WHAV website at whav.net. I'm kind of plugging it. All right, I'm clicked on the, the David Goudswood link on uh, whav.net in the members area. And uh, here we are. All right, HP Lovecraft and Ancient Stone Sites. The Westford Knight, America's Stonehenge, all books by David Godswood available for you to purchase right from the WHAV website. Oh, and by, the link. By extraordinarily coincidence, and not, and absolutely not intentionally, I have a new one coming out in about two weeks you'll have to put up there. Oh, so David, here's a good chance. David Godswood, uh, longtime uh, Haverhill, well, I'm just going to call him a Haverhill native who um, is suffering down there in the south right now, but... Oh, he, you ain't got no idea how much we suffering right now. You know, it's funny, uh, well, first of all, let me tell you, David's a great author. He's got another book coming out. Before we discuss that book, David has also been living an adventuresome life. It seems to me that early spring he was flooded. Uh, yep, since yep. then, his roof came down or something like that. Oh, no, no, just the ceiling came down. The roof is still there. It just doesn't hold water. Ah, uh, okay. Seems to me there was this a runaway dog or two Florida in there. As a flat roof past its prime. Ah, uh, okay. And seems to me there was a runaway dog or two. Oh, there's always. We do, we do rescues. There's always a runaway. <laughs> All right. Did I leave out any other horrendous things happening to you this, this spring and summer? Just, just getting this book out. That was enough. All right. So tell us about your new book. It is called A Horror Guide to Massachusetts. 
a horror guide to Massachusetts. Okay, so and uh, if you remember, I had a book out a few years back called um, "Shadows Over New England." It, it's similar to that in style, in that it's alphabetic listings of towns, real and fictional, and what horror movies or horror stories or novels are set in that town. Oh, uh, fictional towns. Fictional towns are mixed in with real towns. Really? That sounds interesting. Well, so can you give us an example? You have listings for Haverhill, you have listings for Bradford, and you have listings for Dustin Heights. Dustin course, Heights. Yep, that's John Belair's fictional version of Haverhill from his story set in town. Ah, so he uh, did he really intend to uh, feature Haverhill? Uh, he has two different groups of stories based on the protagonist, and one of them are entirely set in Dustin Heights, down to the fact where he goes to see his psychiatrist in what is obviously the Coombs building, and there's that statue in the town common with the, you know, the green lady with the hatchet. Oh, is that book still in print? Uh, I think John Belair's books are all still in print. They're, they're perennial favorites with the, the, the children's reading group. Oh, maybe I should add them also to the member's shop. Now, I, I, I think David will tell you that I'm not hurting his profits, so-called, um, by offering... What, the, are, what, are, what is this profit thing you speak of? <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, but uh, thanks to um, WHAV's um, affiliate status with Amazon, WHAV makes just a tiny little bit of money on every book you purchase through the WHAV website. They do not take that money out of David's pocket. In fact, uh, they they usually don't put anything in to take out. Is that right, David? Let's just say I'm not retiring with Stephen King's income level. But there's hope. There's hope. Not, not at this rate. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, there's always a there's always a roof repair. It seems to me there was some tiles that you had to replace in the bathroom that took well, longer. Well, that was a re that, that was of course a rehab we would have never done if we known the the roof was about to let loose. I see. Hey, David, would see, you... We, in, in Florida terms, we live in an antique. It's been here since the 70s. Oh, really? It's an antique, huh? Oh, yeah. Wow. See, they're not, you're not used to things uh, up here in Massachusetts, like John Greeny, what are your birthplace, uh, going back to 1688. Well, when we were looking at houses down here, um, the real estate lady said, well, there's, there's this house we have, but I, I don't know if you'll like it. How do you feel about an old house? And I well said, I, my, I live, was born and raised in a house that was built between the two world wars. My wife was raised in a three-story Victorian turn of the century. And she kind of looks at me and says, uh, it was built in 1976. That's a year newer than my house. <laughs> yeah, but I bet you got a roof. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, tilted. Hey, Dave, would you mind holding on a second? We're going to go to Community Spotlight. Uh, sure. And then continue the conversation. David Godswood has a new book coming up. What's again? The the book is called A Horror Guide to Massachusetts from Post Mortem Press. Now I I think since the book is already uh, uh, in the publication that it will not include a story about tonight's show as a horror. Oh, there's there are different layers of horror when you say horror story. <laughs> All right. David, please stay with us. We're going to go to Community Spotlight. We'll be right back. David Godswood on the line, local author. Be right back. Open mic! Tim Coco and the Open Mic will be right back. Get in on the action. Call 978-374-1900 or email tcoco at whav.net. If you are enjoying this program, please consider making a donation right now. Your donations to not-for-profit WHAV help keep these vital community services on the air. Donate online at www.whav.net. Phil Christie here. Did you know you can hear comedy and drama every night? Listen to these remastered classics at 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. 
only local radio can bring you this combination of music, news, and features. But only WHAV does. Catch the wave! Hi, I'm meteorologist Gary Best. Do you need to know if it's going to be hot or cold, wet or dry? Well, find out every half hour, seven days a week with wave weather. I'll keep you in touch with up-to-the-minute reports covering the greater Merrimack Valley and beyond. It's WHAV for accurate weather when you want it. Community Spotlight is brought to you by Haverhill Bank. Haverhill Bank is a generous supporter of the area's civic and cultural program. That's all it takes is just one bank. Haverhill Bank. Community Spotlight. This is Anna Chapolis, a volunteer with Animal Rescue Merrimack Valley. You can help provide food, medical care, and sterilization clinics for feral, stray, and foster cats. ARMV donation boxes are at Market Basket stores at Rivers Edge and Westgate Plazas in Haverhill, Market Basket and Shaw's in Plastown, New Hampshire, Market Baskets in North Andover and Lawrence, and Stop and Shop in Methuen. Donations may also be dropped off at weekly adoption events at PECO in Plastown, New Hampshire. For more information about ARMV, call 978-374-7233 or visit online at armv.org. Someone you know is on WHAV. To submit or read your own nonprofit announcements, click on the news page at whav.net or email news at whav.net. WHAV Open Mic! From the Edwin B. Johnson Newsroom, WHAV presents the Open Mic Show with Tim Coco. Make your voice heard. Call 978-374-1900. That's 978-374-1900. Or email tcoco at whav.net. This is the Open Mic Show. I'm Tim Coco. Nathan E. Webster III is in master control and taking your telephone calls, 978-374-1900. This hour of the Open Mic Show is being brought to you by the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council. Smart companies choose the Merrimack Valley. There is an ad for the Merrimack Valley Economic Development Council on the new WHAV website at whav.net. Just click on it and it'll take you right to the website and you'll learn so much more about the Merrimack Valley. Whether you've been here for a hundred years or, or three weeks, you'll find out something that you didn't know before. Alright, we're talking with David Goudswood who saved the day by calling and uh, maybe saved Milt's patience by uh, reducing the amount of time I, I speak. David is, has written a new book, Horror Guide to New England, and it, it'll be, when will it be out, David? Uh, Horror Guide to Massachusetts oh, sorry. will be out in <laughs> two weeks. That's, as soon as it's uh, on the it's website, I'll not up on Amazon yet, well, otherwise I'd already be nagging you. Oh, wait a minute. David and Scott Godsworth forward by uh, Greg. I can't. He already has this on screen. Yes, he's that good. Wow! Despite right. being an ex-con, he's that good. Ah, an ex-con. Yeah, for uh, relay for uh, life, uh, jail day or whatever it was called. Or uh, yeah, let's so, go with that story. Did you email that to him? No. How did you? I, I was gonna. I was gonna mention. I said I wasn't gonna send it to him because I didn't think it reproduced well on uh, computer screens because of the woodcut. But that ain't bad. Not bad. Well, uh, Nate says he uh, learned it while he was in the slammer. Learned how to do this. So. <laughs> you know what I miss? People who call it the Who Scout. That was such an elegant word. Yeah, actually, I have to say I don't know if I've just forgotten, but I I don't really. I'm not really familiar with that term. But Nate knew about it, so. I was amazed by that. <laughs> well, when you've been in the hokey, you know. Yeah, actually, how many words are there? The pokey, the hooskow, the slammer? The big house. The big house. Hey, that's or pretty correct, good. If you're from our area, you just go to Walpole. Oh, yeah, that's true. Up up here. MCI, that's right. Which what is you... in the book, by the way. MCI Walpole? I just call it Walpole because I'm a local. All right, yeah. 
so, so tell us, uh, give us a little hint as to what kind of story, what kind of horror happened there. Uh, actually, it was a short story set among the prisoners. And it, it, this is one of those oddball stories that it's like, there's no way I can explain this, even with the fact that you've got four and a half minutes left to kill on the air. Yes. <laughs> but Haverhill, Haverhill is well represented in there. Um, yeah, of course, Joe Hill's book, Nosferatu, is set in Haverhill. Yeah, that's the one you uh, told. N Nate, did you ever get that email? David Goswood wrote to you. Uh, you. Oh, he gets all sorts of hate mail from me all week long. He doesn't read any one of them over another. Nate, do you remember this? Uh, David Goswood sent you a note. Uh, well, somehow I know about it. I think he copied me. Uh, or maybe it was on the website. Um, I don't know where it was. Uh, but anyway, um, that's the book you know by another name. David, what is that name? Uh, he's, he calls it by the, the spelling out, which is a, it's a license plate on a, a car in the book. So he calls it NOS482, Nosferatu. <laughs> okay, see, Nate, that's see, you learn something new every day. Yeah, so. Uh, uh, it, that, that was actually a very difficult thing to figure out for the book, because the whole idea of this book is it's geographically oriented. And Joe Hill actually never visited Haverhill. He just puts a covered bridge across the Merrimack River. And, of course, the first assumption is that, well, it must be Rock's Village, because that's the old bridge. No, it doesn't match. And I finally, literally, took every reference to the bridge and set them up and went to a Google map, and it turns out the only place that matches that particular reference to the hero walking along the riverbank under 495 to the bridge is Ward Hill. Really? Okay. So it's the corner of Ward Hill where it crosses over into the... Uh, I guess that would be North Andover at that point or something. Yeah, listeners, David has taught me that when you're doing research for an article, and this has turned out to be true for the Haverhill Heritage series, is that one odd fact leads to an entirely, entirely new story of its own. <laughs> <laughs> and well, I'm working on a wavelength piece right now for the Heritage series on uh, Haverhill in the Salem Witch Trial hysteria. Ah, yes, that was last year, wasn't it? Uh, you're thinking <laughs> of the election. I'm going back a little further. <laughs> okay. You know, Saris and Burton. Uh, All right, John Tierney, you're okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but well, for instance, what I found researching it is that Salem only accounted for 39 of, 100, of the 152 people formerly accused of witchcraft in 1692. 25%. Wow. That's it. Only 25%, 45% of the people formerly accused of witchcraft were from Andover. I knew there was something about Andover, okay. <laughs> um, one of, the one of our affiliate stations, so they're very yeah. nice people. <laughs> well, as of now, maybe no, but <laughs> <laughs> one of the residents had a wife who was ill. She had strange pain. She felt pressure on her back. So this guy, being a genius, says, well, maybe she's bewitched. And he sends for two of the girls from Salem who had been accused, accusing people of witchcraft to come out and inspect his wife and say, is she bewitched? Well, golly gee, they say yes. No oh, boy. For, well, we're looking you know. forward to that. And, David, you've helped uh, take me to the end of the program. Uh, it wouldn't be the first time I've killed the broadcast. No, no, yeah, it was very helpful. Uh, and uh, next week, I, we're going to be giving away those uh, birthday cakes. Seems to me uh, your parents are in the list, aren't they? I believe my father is. All right, so next week is the drawing. So, folks, uh, early in the program next week, call in birthdays or anniversaries for June and July. I know it's beautiful days out, but take your smartphone with you and listen to WHAV, and uh, you'll be able to, to keep up with it. All right, they've cut us off, Haverhill Community Television, so uh, we'll, we'll conclude. They got you on in the first place. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. It was, took a while, I guess. Uh, but anyway, um, Jack Bevilacqua is expected to be here on July seventh, if I can meet his list of demands. 
um, all kinds of weird things, but I think we might be able to, to settle for a, a nice cream at Carter's. So we'll see how that goes. I think a well-placed baseball bat will solve the problem either way. <laughs> well, that might well be the case. Boy, uh, I'm glad we're off the air. Uh, well, we're still on uh, the stream, so folks. <laughs> Jack usually listens, so who knows? We'll see what yeah, happens. Well, I'll hear about that one then. Oh, well, he'll be happy about it. All right, David, thank you very much. And we'll look forward to, to the later, new Jim. book that I'll try to get the name right, Horror Guide to Massachusetts. Yes, it's part of a series. It'll be, uh, next will be Horror Guide to Florida, then New Hampshire and Vermont. A lot to look forward to. Thank you so much, David. You bet. And Talk the links later. are working on the website, so thank you very much for that. Bye. All right. Take care. Thank you. All right. That's it for the Open Mic Show. Please join us again next week. Take your radio or your television with you, if you can, uh, to keep up. Uh, now that I've uh, broken Tom Bergeron's record and actually read clothing labels on the air, um, keep that in mind. All right. Have a great night. We'll be back next week with birthday prize winnings. Open Mic! Join Tim Coco live on the open mic again next Monday night at 6.30. The opinions expressed on the open mic show are not necessarily those of WHAV, its underwriters or affiliated stations. The open mic show came to you from the Edwin V. Johnson Newsroom.